Now that we've showed you how to set up the Eclipse environment for Selenium WebDriver tests, the next step is to export the Selenium IDE tests into this new environment. Just as before, if you have any questions as we're going through this process, feel free to speak up and ask, or you can send them over the chat window. So the first step is in our new project is we want to create a new package that's going to store our tests. So we do this by right-clicking on the project, selecting New, and selecting Package. Once we do that, the next thing we need to do is give the package a name. Uh, we're going to stick with our convention, which is com.rtts.tests, and click Finish. Uh, I just saw a question that came over in the chat, and it says, do you have to use that name? And the answer is no. You can pretty much choose any name that you want. You just have to make sure that after the test is exported that you change the package name to the appropriate value. You'll see that uh, in the next couple slides. So once we create our new package, the next thing we want to do is go back to the Selenium IDE, and we want to go to the main menu and select File, Export Test Case As, and we're going to choose JUnit4 WebDriver. Again, that's the environment that we've configured. If you were using another environment like Visual Studio, you might be choosing the C-Sharp WebDriver option. But in our Eclipse environment, we're going to be running the tests as JUnit tests. We're going to choose JUnit4 WebDriver. The next step is to select the path which is the location where these tests are going to be saved. The top part of the path is the location of your Eclipse Java project. And then the remaining path is going to be your package directory. So starting with the source folder, you'll see we go to the com RTTS tests that matches our package name. And then we give the test a name and click Save. Once we do that, we go back to our Eclipse environment. We're going to refresh the project. And what you should see is that newly created test listed in the new package. You'll notice there's a red X next to it, and that's because there's you have to rename the package name to match the actual name that you gave it. The Selenium IDE exporter doesn't know where you're going to export the test to, so it just gives a generic name and you just need to match that to the actual package name. Okay, so let's go look at our environment and see if we can recreate this process. So here's our new project that we just created. I'm going to right click and select New Package. And again, we're going to stick with our convention and call it com.rtts.test. Once that package is created, I'm going to go back to the Selenium IDE. Here's our basic transaction test that we were working with earlier. And I'm going to export that test case as a JUnit4 WebDriver test. Again, the location where the export is going to take place is going to be our project directory and then the package directory within there. We give the test a name. I'm going to give it the same name, basic transaction. And I'm going to save it. Once we do that, we can refresh our package. And you'll see that new test has been added. If I open it up, you'll see that there's an error message on the first line, and we just need to match the package name to the name given. We can save that test, and once we save it, we're now able to run it by right-clicking on the test, select Run As, JUnit Test. And what this will do is this will execute the, no, the new WebDriver test that we've just created. One of the differences, you'll see that the WebDriver will actually launch the browser execute the same test that we had in the IDE, and then close the browser when it's finished. And once the test is finished, uh, you can see in the JUnit panel that the test was completed and there were no errors, which is indicated by the green bar, which means the test was successful.